Is that your p l Or are you just happy to see me? Good morning, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is Saturday. ICT Shotgun Saturday. And I'm a little bit out of practice here. Usually I come in firing on all cylinders and whatnot. I have a either a chip on my shoulder <laughs> or an agenda to get through. So admittedly, I have a lot of things going on this weekend and next weekend that has my mind preoccupied. But I'll tell you about that after we get through those those weeks. It's nothing bad. It's all good stuff. It's all family oriented. But uh, that was another reason why I was a little late here. I was supposed to be here at eight thirty. I was tardy by the looks of things. I was about nine minutes or so late. But that's what you get sometimes, right? When it's free, you got to be a little bit more flexible. So I have some some bullet points that I want to cover today. And I want to start off with, you know, why are you here? Like, why do you come to my Twitter page? Why do you come to my YouTube page? Why do you listen to my lectures? Is it out of just morbid curiosity because you've seen other people talk about me? You want to see, okay, is it really the train wreck, the car crash that everybody wants to slop and rubberneck and see, hey, look, you know, what's going on there? Is there any carnage, any kind of blood loss? Chances are you probably found your way here on those premises and found out that there's a little bit more going on than what other people like to say. Or maybe it's because you want to be a part of a community, uh, a like-minded hive mentality. Uh, that's kind of like what I'm trying to foster with this community. I want everyone to kind of like think independently and unique within the realm of their own personal model. And the discovery of that model is found in the mentoring and the lecturing. But these discussions, these things that I do on Twitter spaces where I'm not monetized, there are no ads playing. You're getting right from the heart, right from the trenches, real world experience, you know, the things that you're going to battle with most. And it's my endeavor to try to pull your attention away from what you think is most paramount, which is the buy and sell, get me in, get me out. Where do I put my stop loss? What fair value gap do I use? What order block do I use? And those things are secondary. And I know it sounds like it can't be true, but it is. And I want you to think about how many things I've taught, new concepts, new approaches to things that would otherwise be a hindrance to an average trader. And then thinking about what have you done with it? See, there's this, this growing community within this community that usually breaks off and creates these little small little factions of little sub communities and you know, collection of like-minded individuals. And I don't have anything against that. Like, I mean, for me to say that would be in opposition to growth and finding your own niche and your own way in this industry. I'm just a conduit. Okay. If I was a cult leader in the sense that most people like to say I am, I wouldn't want anybody else to, to take your attention away and try to teach you something better. Because if there was something better, I would point to it. But I'm teaching you what I created. These are my concepts. And no one else is going to teach it to you better. And when I'm done in November, you're welcome to go and do whatever you want to do. And if you want to start your own little communities, you know, by all means, you know, have at it. I'm certainly not going to try to stand in your way. But the folks that are here that try to learn, what have you done with it so far? For some of you, it's like the guy you see on the beach with the little metal detector and the headphones. He's waving that thing across the, the beach, the sandy beaches. I watched a couple of these guys doing it. And in fact, one of them was actually in the water down in uh, Clearwater in Florida when we were down there. And by the way, it feels awfully cold in Maryland now after being down there, you know, coming back up here. I love the cold, but today this feels unseasonably cold. 
which kind of feels weird this close to June. But some of you feel like you're out there with this metal detector trying to find the lost piece of the ICT puzzle. And we'll talk more about that later in this presentation. But I just want to be a, a little gentle reminder that what you're here for, what was the original reason for you to come to me seeking whatever it is that you saw? What was that driving passion that brought you here? And how have you been distracted? Is it things at work? Is it things at home? I've read some tweets from individuals saying that you know, their spouse were not in support of what they're doing. And it won't matter if I were to talk to them individually and say, hey, look, I promise you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your husband or your wife, your significant other, your partner on the path of profitability. Scouts on our promise. They won't believe it. And this is kind of like what I was tweeting yesterday. Um, a couple of the fellows that are out there, you know, they're, in my opinion, doing something really cool. I like what they're doing. And I joined their their live stream on YouTube and I shared the, the link. And I prompted them to talk about certain things that I wanted to more or less segue into this weekend somehow and just be part of the presentation. But I think it's going to be predominantly. 90% of it. And when you first come to someone to learn a skill, whether it be trading, whether it be um, a sports you know, event or something like a golfer wanting to learn how to drive a golf ball better or putt better or a shooter, okay, you, know, you want to learn how to shoot better. And you come there to that teacher, that, that person that wants to offer their experience to you and you come to them many times with these preconceived notions that you know how you should be taught. So you already have in your mind what it is that this educator should or should not do. And then if it doesn't meet that expectation that you have, admittedly, you have to admit that you're coming to that person in a state of ignorance. You have no idea what you're supposed to be doing, but you're holding on to this idea that you know, you know how you should be taught. When you don't know the subject matter, you're the student. You're not even the student yet. You're just coming there with a, with a spirit of expectation. And some of you come with a spirit of entitlement, thinking that it's owed to you faster, like somehow that you're supposed to be ushered to the front of the line ahead of everyone else that's been working very hard diligently to try to learn the skill set. And sometimes because of either cultural barriers or language barriers, I may not be able to properly articulate what it is that is necessary for you to understand something. In that regard, that's what makes me not a good mentor. Okay. And that's why I say I'm not the best mentor, but the things I'm teaching, I often pray that I find a way to get that message that I'm trying to talk about to and through all of you. And this isn't probably the best medium to do it because you're only going to hear me in my native tongue, which is English. And sometimes it's not that good. Sometimes I talk in words that aren't all that refined. And sometimes I use colorful words that I'm not proud of, but I'm trying to do my best most times like I am today. I'm trying to be very balanced because this is a topic that in my mind needs to be reminded constantly throughout your progress and because there's a new influx of new students coming to me all the time it's important for you to come in with the right mindset and not lose sight of what you came here for you should be here for one reason only to learn how to make money that's it if a secondary supporting reason is that you want to be amongst other people that are doing what you're doing and see their growth, see their concerns, uh, see the, the barriers, the speed bumps that they have to go through. So that way it reminds you that it's not just you that's going through it. It's everyone goes through the same. I went through it. And most like everything else I've ever taught, you know, there's going to be this point in which when you're listening to me, 
or watching me do executions or talking about what the market's going to do, you'll have selective hearing because you're coming to me with your preconceived notions about what it is that you need. So you think you need to know this or that, and then you'll be understanding better when you're sitting down in front of the charts live. And that is an illusion. I felt that way as a young man. I felt that, uh, you know, all I had to do was read a few books and I'd had, I'd figured it out. Not knowing that I was going to be a huge barrier like you are and like everybody else that does this. That seven pound universe that's in between your ears, that brain has a wonderful, um, I guess, ability to present distractions or reasons not to do certain things or follow rules. And I talked about a mindset that many people have, but won't admit to it. And the ones that try to resist it while learning how to trade, they're not going to be successful. And that trait is needing to be right. I I don't open my comment section up in newer videos on my YouTube channel because uh, it's mostly a sugar fest. Okay. And it honestly, from the outside, if I was looking at my channel, I would swear up and down that those comments, most of them would be fabricated, like created from an outside third party source that would be making me look like I'm just loved. And while I appreciate that, you can, you're welcome to do that on Twitter. I mean, I'm not going to high five every one of them, but if it's meaningful to me and it touches me, I'll heart it. But invariably, I'll get the uh, stragglers that come through my comment section. And one came through the other day and uh, his comment was, and this is, listen closely because this is your, your five minutes of fame. <laughs> he says to me, I'm assuming it's a guy, I don't know. He says, I hate your videos. They seem to be only you making yourself sound right well it's not about being right but if i call the market and it happens what else you call that it's accurate right and i'm trying the whole premise behind that youtube channel and me talking to you right now is for you to learn how to do this correctly but your goal is not to be right your goal is to be profitable because you can be incorrect i've been incorrect you watch me do two trades this week And while they were partial profits taken, the balance was stopped out in the black. It means they didn't get it stopped out with a loss, but they were still stopped out nonetheless. Was I right? No. Was the outcome favorable? Yes. And some people's eyes would say, no, you failed because you thought that it was going to go up there. But if they would have had that account and that money transaction was deposited in their account, they wouldn't look at that as a incorrect execution. They would think, well, I did something right. Look, I made money. And that's the mindset you need to be here with. Because in November 2023, I'm going to turn you loose. And you'll be left to what you have collected in terms of experience, notes, what routine you've adopted. And you need to be really focusing on how to incur more income. Secondary stream, third stream's income. Folks, we are in deep waters, not just in America, everywhere. It's going to get real hard. So your due diligence is required in this. And I saw another comment. This guy says, uh, you always talk down to your students. No, I'm correcting those individuals that are out there trying to promote their understanding, which is lacking, and trying to create mentorships with something I just introduced. I just introduced something. And they're out there already whipping up mentorships. That's not the income stream that I was referring to. I understand that, you know, I'm I'm like the hot topic right now. I will fizzle out when I stop putting videos up and I'm not on Twitter anymore in November. It will happen. Somebody else will get real hot and everybody will clamor and follow them. And that's okay. I'm not here for the lifelong worshiping. I don't want any of that. But I want you to be mindful that when you are training yourself 
every day before you sit down and watch a video of mine or, or sit down and listen to these types of discussions, which are all psychological. It's to prepare your mind. Okay, it's to prepare you with your mindset about what it is that you're doing. Recalibrating yourself. You're not here to make me a celebrity. I don't want to be a celebrity. I don't want to be looked up to in high regard like some of you want me to be. I don't want that. You are here to learn how to make money. I have that ability to share with you how to find multiple ways of doing it in the marketplace. But most of you are trying to do that metal detector guy on the beach. He's looking for someone that lost some coins or maybe they lost their wedding band. And how many times does he really find something like that? Probably not all that often. But he knows that what if he does? It pays for all the times they was out there plundering around through the sand. But in his mind, he's out there getting some sun. He loves what he's doing. He has submitted himself to the process. And if it happens that he finds something, well, that's all the better. But he enjoys doing what he's doing. Do you enjoy doing this? I saw a tweet this morning from a person saying, uh, I hate this. I hate doing this. And I don't know if I should quit. The fact that you sat down and tweeted that. You have branded that on your soul. Your very spirit now has that very thing attached to it. And you have no idea the difficulty that you're going to have to work beyond that. When you vocalize, okay, because in the tongue there's power, okay? It's the power of giving life and taking life. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. I can say to you, you are one of my best students. You are so good at what you've done. You've done so well training and listening and following all the rules. And if I was to say that to you, you would feel empowered. Oh, it's awesome. I see Pete said that about me. Man, it's great. I feel so good. Or if I sat down with one of you and said, look at you. You are a waste of a student. You've done nothing correctly. You've literally wasted your time and you don't do anything right. It's all your fault. So be miserable. Stay in that state of mind. I don't, I don't want to waste my time on you. Wow. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't talk to my students like that. What I do is I show them what they're doing incorrectly. So that way they can correct themselves. If you were off course in a ship, one small little degree off early on in your development or your course of departure, you're leaving your port of departure, heading towards some destination. If that ship is off one degree, just one degree over the course of your entire journey, you will not arrive on time. You might be able to calibrate later on in the middle of the journey when you discover that you're on the wrong path. But why would you want to do that? Keep your bearings. Know exactly where you're here, what you're here for, why you're here. It's to learn how to make money. How to read these charts. Get that skill set. If you don't focus on that and let that be your number one driving reason for being here, you'll get distracted with other things. You won't be that diligent about your study. You'll let the drama, the pain, the discomfort of the process that everybody has to go through. You want it to be faster. And the more you want it to be faster, quicker for you to understand it, the longer it's going to be. Because you're wasting time and energy and effort worrying about how to speed it along instead of just going through the normal, everyday approach to going through it. There's only way to go through it is to go forward. That's it. There's no around shortcut. There's no faster way. There's nobody going to be able to condense this so that way you understand it correctly. The only thing they can talk about, they could be an echo. Take a small little sampling of something I've said, and it sounds amazing to the first-time listener. Though. Oh, this is awesome. This is great. I understand it. I created it. 
but it's going to be short in their understanding and they won't know when the best time to use that specific tool, that approach, that mindset. And they leave it to the audience to come with their own result. And they'll pony show that. And they'll say, look what I'm doing. I'm teaching. I'm making all my students profitable. When the only thing you've done is echoed. And you've done it in an incomplete manner. That's how I'm talking to my students. They're quickly trying to go out there and create a name for themselves as a teacher. If that's what you want to do, get the experience, learn it properly. You aren't, you aren't done learning yet. Everything I've taught, I still have things to talk about. None of my charter members are complete. They may have a model. They may have profitability. They may have no real need to come to me anymore. But if you're going to weigh out in the balances, do they know everything that I know or was willing to teach or that I already taught? No, none of them do. Not one of them do that. Because the ones that are profitable, they found what they were looking for while going through the process. And none of them have came back to me and said, what I came to you looking for and had in mind what I was going to learn, I learned it exactly and it was exactly what I was expecting. They all said, I didn't even see this coming. And now this is what I trade and I'm completely comfortable. Are you willing to be flexible like that? Because that's what's required. You have to have that, that flexibility, that Ability to adapt. Because again, when you come to someone as a student, or you're not even a student yet, you come here with the expectation you're going to learn how to make money. That's great. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because if you don't have that, you'll quit. Because if you're here to just feel good, like it's some kind of club, some kind of a community that just keeps everybody hopped up on goofballs, feeling good. And I try to do that when it's appropriate, when we're expecting a certain market move to happen or a certain level get hit. You know, I'll put some kind of a little bit of a spin on it, whether it be a a meme or some kind of uh, backhanded remark, <laughs> just to create some emotional response because that way it anchors it to you. You'll remember it because of that. Whereas if I just say it's going to go here, it goes there, and I never talk about it anymore, it just goes. It, it, you won't see that as something that is a milestone which is important to see marked logged recorded in a journal because you will encounter times when it feels like you can't do it it feels like it won't make sense you can come to me with this spirit of expectation and have the right mindset saying okay i know nothing i'm ready to learn and then what happens is, because I have so many things to teach, I have so many approaches to, to going into the marketplace and finding setups, that was my weakness. I was afraid to enter the trades because I had no real understanding in 1992 what I was doing. So the entirety of 1993 and 94, I developed entry models because that's what I was fearful of. And I believed that I needed to be in every price swing. Every time something happened in the marketplace, I had to know why it did that. And because I'm obsessively compulsive, I poured all my energy and time into understanding what causes all these types of movements. And that's how I have 81 entry models. Do you need 81 of them? No. I didn't set out to have 81. I didn't set out to have a specific number. It just, this was the outcome. When I had the interview with Corbs, you know, he's like, you, you've authored and, and created a lot of different approaches and things in, in the industry that now people are using. You know, how many do you have? And I wish, I wish I wouldn't have said the number because now what happens is, is everybody assumes that I'm going to teach all 81 of them. I'm not. And if you're thinking I'm going to put them in the books and that's the reason why you're going to buy the books, don't buy the books. Okay. I don't want you thinking that I'm going to tuck all that stuff in, in three books. I'm not. I'll talk about a few ones I haven't even taught my private mentorship group because I want to leave an impression. I want my fingerprints known so that way you'll look back through history and you'll see more of that. 
I haven't just been inner circle trader. That's just the longest running name I've used on the internet. Admittedly, it's the most, well, recognized. But I want to put it down in November. I don't want to be ICT anymore. I just want to be Michael. And when I leave in November, I want you to feel empowered, not, oh, I feel like I'm disconnected. And I want you to know that everything I've taught thus far is more than enough. What have you done with it? See, when you, when you come to me and you want to learn and you're in the right mindset and you start learning new things and new concepts and approaches and things that help fortify your understanding of price action, you get addicted to that. And I do my best to make it sticky so that way you want to come back because it's easy to talk yourself out of it in the beginning. It's easy. It's easy to say this is too hard. It's really too hard, too much effort. I, you know, why bother? Let me find someone that gives out signals. And to the gentleman that tweeted to me, do I give out signals? I wasn't making fun of you. I was just retweeting your tweet because I knew the community would come along and say, there is no better signal than the one that you're going to find on your own. And I'm teaching you how to do that. So when I do that, folks, it's not the tweet of shame. <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to, to throw somebody out there in the in the fields that way they're wolf packed and tore them to shreds. So if you were mean-spirited, don't do that. That's not what I'm doing it for. It's just to encourage them so that way they can see that when they're part of this community with the proper mindset, you won't need signals. But I'm aware as a mentor, I'm a, I'm, I'm a realist. There's going to be people that come to me with all the right intentions, even with the proper mindset. I will fail them as a mentor because of something I can't do. And I'm a human. I can't meet every expectation of every student that comes to me. I understand that. And I wish that I could get that reach to be able to get that person that I can't fully communicate the understanding that they're lacking. But I'm, I'm a realist. I know that I'm going to fail some of you. In that regard, I will. But it doesn't cancel the responsibility that you have. You have to make a real conscious effort to do this and stay motivated. And the way you stay motivated is why are you doing it? Why are you here? Are you here because you've seen no evidence that these things work or you've seen evidence that other people have even used the content and they're making real money? Chances are that's probably what's happening. I think I'm seeing the biggest growth because of that very thing. People are making money. They're attributing it to what they learned from me. And I'm so thankful and appreciative of that. It's all they're asked for. Because when they come here and they hear me, they can hear me say these words. I have been blessed. Whether you choose to believe in God or not, I know he exists. And you learned what he gave me. And I'm a firm believer. Because I'm cheerfully giving it to you, he continuously blesses me. Not only in this, but he blesses my life in other things as well. You don't have to go to church because you came to me as a, as a student. I'm not saying that at all. But I want the opportunity for him to receive all the glory, all the praise, all the attention. I don't want that. If I wanted it, I'd stay around. I'm at the height, folks. If you think this is all about beating my chest and, and bragging, this is not bragging. Think, listen to what I'm about to say. I'm at the biggest I've ever been. And I'm sure I'll probably have more following come November. And I'm leaving. I'm canceling everything everybody's ever said about me. I'm not what everyone that doesn't like me or wants to tear me down. I'm not like that. I've never been that way. I actively do things, even in my personal time, when I first wake up in the morning, all of you are my first thoughts. Every single one of you, whether you're my private students or my public students, you're my first thought, even before my own children. My passion is in helping other people. My children are in my, hand, in my care. They're in my hands. I'm not worrying about them. 
but I'm worrying about you, the person that watches the video and thinks you understand everything because you watched the video at two times the speed without even taking notes and thinking, I'm going to go out there and do it with my live account. I don't want you to do that. I want you to learn it properly. And I want you to be absolutely bored to death that you know exactly what you're doing. That's how you know you're ready to trade. That's how you know it's good for you to go out there and try to get those funded accounts. It's good for you to then consider trading with real money because you know that you're not all hopped up. You're not excited about making the money. You're just, well, I'm ready. I mean, I can do it. I'm not scared. I'm not terribly excited. That I'm going to be overconfident. I just, this is the rule based idea I'm following. It seems to work a lot. It fails sometimes, but I'm able to come back from that. It doesn't knock the legs out from underneath me. It just means that I took a loss. And then I have to keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing and keep the losses minimized and let money management and trade management and the model I follow dictate the outcome. And don't put time limits on your success. I have to be this by that. No, you don't. Trust me. That date on the calendar, that time will come and you'll still be here breathing. The things around you will still be the way they are, even if you don't get there because that was a goal you set. Goals have to be flexible. They're time-based, yes, but they're not in stone. They're just coordinates. I'm aiming for this destination. Well, your destination should be excellence. That's it. You should always be aiming for excellence. And you're going to find that you're going to have to calibrate yourself throughout the progress and process of getting to that destination. You're not going to get there overnight. Nobody, believe me, man, if there was somebody on this planet that was going to be able to do it overnight, I swear to God, I believe I was going to be it. Look at the level of accuracy that my skill set and concepts have given to other people and what I'm able to showcase. Before it happens, I explain to you what's going to happen. And I still, still can't be what I thought I was going to be when I first started. When I first started to really understand what I had in my hands. Because me as a human being, I wrestle with, uh, this is, I was going to reply this, uh, folk, uh, this, not, I don't know if it's a guy or girl now that I think about it, but uh, one of the guys, um, follow me on Twitter. They mentioned like, you know, how do you overcome, you know, when you don't do it right or if you lose money? Like, how do you keep pressing forward? Well, it goes back to what you're doing. Why are you doing it? See, I've worked a lot of stupid jobs. And while we were driving down to Florida, I asked my wife, I said, when you were younger, how many jobs have you had? And she's like, um, I don't know. And we sat there and thought about it, thought about it. And her list was really, really short. I had like 27 jobs. 27 jobs as a young man. I bounced around. like I'm, Now, some of them were like one or two days. <laughs> but I, I was there, right? I was there. I did the job. And I said, the hell with this. I, I ain't doing this. As soon as I got under the pressure, of someone I knew was an idiot that did not know what they're doing. I, I couldn't be under them. I was like, you know, what? I, I, I can't, this, this person has no idea what they're doing. They don't know how to manage people. They have, they don't even know their own job. And if you're going to sign on to a job and they're not going to properly train you, what does that mean? You're going to be stressed out and chances are they're probably going to get rid of you anyway, because you aren't able to do the job that they can't train you to do properly anyway. So see ya. Well, in this endeavor, I tried to be the best manager. If you were to come to me as a student, I look at you as a college student. I'm the college itself. I'm the college professor. I'm the teacher. Okay, so I'm trying to fill all those seats, wear all those hats. 
and I'm trying to be as personable as I possibly can. I am giving you more time than any other person out there, whether they charge money or do it for free. Nobody is investing more into you than I am. Nobody is. I'm doing it more than you are. I believe in you more than you do. I know what you're doing incorrectly, and I know how to overcome that. But whether you're willing to listen to that good advice or not remains to be seen. And I have students that don't want to listen. And they stay exactly where they started when they first came here. And some of them get bent out of shape. And they blame their failure on me. And it's not accurate. You're just doing things incorrectly or not doing the things I've told you to do. Or doing it long enough. It took me six years. Six years, folks. What if I would have said, all right, guys, my name is Michael Huddleston. You know, I know how to trade these markets. I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going to prove it beforehand. I'm going to show you what it's going to do. Bada bing, bada boom. And then I said, at the end of 30 days of calling every single day correctly, and it did exactly what I was expecting it to do, say, okay, now, who wants to sign up to learn how to do this? And it's going to take you six years. Right away, oh, no, man, I got things to do. <laughs> I got. Sorry, there's a guy over on YouTube that's doing something in Discord for $30 a month. I'm going to go there. No. So the way I teach is I lay breadcrumbs down. I give you what I think is going to happen in the future. So I, I predict the future using tools and concepts that I've already taught. So that way you can see, does this resonate with you? Do you like the feeling of seeing us as a community look for the market to do a specific thing? And then when it comes to pass, how do you feel? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel like it's just luck? Do you feel like it is just another day at the job? It should be that, just another day at the job. When you go to work this coming week, for those of you who have jobs, do you feel like you need to go home and tell your friends and coworkers that you meet outside the, the workplace or go online and say, I had the most amazing day at work. You have no idea. I processed so many accounts today. I, I was the head of everybody else. Look how, many, look how many accounts I processed today. And I only lost one customer, but I got it back because I picked up a new customer over here. That's the same thing what everybody wants to do in trading. They want to go do their trades, go on social media and say, look, look at this trade I did over here. Look, look, look. I made this many pips. I made this many handles, this many points. Yeah, I got, I got stopped out over here, but I, I got it back over here. I corrected my drawdown. Look at this. That's not the right mindset. You don't do it at your job. Why? Because nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what you did to earn your paycheck. They don't care. They only care what you drive, where you sleep, how you spend your money, what you dress like. Because they won't be content where they are in the skin they're in right now. They want to live a different life. So that's what everybody is pursuing. So that's the influence. Okay, that influencer, uh, that, that factor. I have influencer factor within my name, my brand, who I am. I'm not promoting fast cars, fast life, everything else. I have lots of nice things. I have lots of money. I have lots of everything. I have freedom, all that business. I'm teaching you not to look at that stuff. Don't care about that stuff because that is, well, short-term gratification. That's it, short-term gratification. That stuff doesn't make me happy. Doing this, helping all of you, I love that. I have $100,000 cars that sit most of the time. Most of you say, well, if I had a car like that, I'd be driving. No, you wouldn't. Not if you were doing what we're doing. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be looking for new, new things to explore. New experiences, not collecting things. Collecting things is a waste. It's more things to worry about. 
Think about it. Having a nice car, I don't ever like getting out of it and leaving it anywhere. Because people are just jerks. I've had my cars keyed up. And I was parked away from everybody else. So you can't have nice things and not worry about them. And just because you can afford to replace them doesn't change the fact that you just don't want it tore up. So when you come here, you shouldn't be looking at me as a conduit to get you to that lifestyle so you can go out there and influence like that because I, that's the most repulsive thing. I can't stand it. I've never been like that. Look at my cars. Look at my house. Look where I'm going on vacation. Look what I'm wearing. Look how much money I wasted on watches. Or going into a Rolex store, then not buying a knockoff <laughs> and saying, here's the oh, here's a Rolex I bought. And you didn't, you didn't buy a real Rolex. And by the way, Rolex sucks. Sorry, hurt your feelings, but they are garbage. Patak, Philippe, that's a watch. But I digress. When you come as a student, you fall sometimes into a trap of ever learning, but never coming to your own model. And you're much like my daughter. My daughter, God bless her. She is a constant drain from my bank account. <laughs> and I understand that you have to take care of your kids. I understand that. Okay. But she's coming up on 30 years old and she's the oldest of all my children. She's not biologically mine, but uh, she has, I'm convinced, this fear of failing what she set out to do. And to combat that, she has become, and there's a point in this, so don't, don't lose sight or get bored by this because this pertains to you. But because she's afraid to lose and fail, the things that she went to college for originally, she no longer pursued. It was always a constant changing in her major. So the only thing she's really obtained in all the years since high school is new, new classes and credits that are no longer going towards her original goal, which was to be a teacher. That's what she wanted to do. And we were all behind her, like, hey, it's great. You do it. And when she got into college, against my advice, I told her not to do it. And some of the things that I saw in her as a child in an early teen, I was correct in. She's very indecisive and she doesn't want to fail. Well, that's kind of like everybody when they're a teenager. But many of you probably still have those traits right now as a fledgling student in learning how to trade. And what will happen is, is what she's found herself in. She's constantly learning something new. Now, from her perspective, if you listen to her, she'll say, I'm doing this because I feel like this is where I should go. I should do this. But it's always changing. Every, every three months, she's changing course and changing direction. Now, imagine if you got on a cruise ship and you're supposed to go from the coast of California to Hawaii, like I'm hoping to do in the spring of next year. <laughs> but there's always this change, of course, and you never really get there. You know, are you going to be happy about that? No. You, you wanted to get to a specific destination. And our expectations and her as parents, we're scratching our head thinking, like, what the hell's going on here? Like, you've been in college, 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 and you haven't even got your four-year degree yet. You got an associate's, but then you keep changing your, your major. And this is my opinion, and I've only made this known to you now at this time, and my wife knows about it, but I've, I wouldn't sit down with her and tell her this because the times I try to do it, it just she clammed up and got mad and resentful to, towards me, and, and I just don't want to be a discouragement to her. So it's her life, you know. Let her live it like she wants to live it. But from an outside perspective, and also being her father, I'm, I'm thinking that she is providing a perfect excuse why she never has to experience potential failure. I think she knows in her heart of hearts, she's not equipped to be a teacher. I don't believe she is. She doesn't want children. So how can you possibly be a good teacher if you are opposed to having children? Like she will never have children. We will never be grandparents because of her. 
So now how does that relate to you as a trader? And what does that even mean to you? Why are you even listening to this? When you come to me and you see all those videos and always something new coming from ICT, the people that don't like me or have a competitive uh, mindset or they have something they're selling themselves. See, I'm, I'm constantly giving out fresh new ideas. They have one trick pony stuff, usually retail garbage. Okay. And this is the stuff when I start talking like this, it gets them all pissed off. And they want to make videos about me, talk about me, do tweets, take things. And they go on podcasts and interviews and they talk about me. <laughs> I'm not talking about these yahoos, these losers. Okay. But they're all, they all have my name in their mouth. They're only doing that because I'm crushing them. I'm literally beating the fuck out of their sales. Because when people come here, they realize, why am I wasting my money buying on that, this stuff? And why am I worried about trying to get their opinion when this guy over here is calling it before it happens and he's doing it on Twitter right there before and here it is. It's on YouTube. He's doing it in videos. He's saying this is exactly where it's going to go. It's going. Who are you going to spend money on when you see somebody doing that and then teaches you how to do that? Of course, they're going to be mad. They're going to hate me. They're going to hate my ass. They're going to make up shit if they ain't even true about me because they want you to not spend the time here. Because if you spend time with me, you're going to learn how to do this. But some of you, some of you will get caught up in this trap of constantly learning because you're afraid to sit down with one model, one model, follow the rules, stick to that process and let it yield whatever experience is intended for you. And then you have a baseline. That's why I, I could literally give out a model every single day. And some of you want me to do that. But the only thing it's going to do is it, it's like a, a dog in a meat market. You ain't going to know what to do. You're going to run around and you just chase everything. Instead of simply sitting down and saying, you know what? I'll just have a filet. Thank you. And I've done that with the 2022 model. I've done that just recently with the silver bullet model. You don't have to have anything. I have lots more coming, but you don't have to have anything else. The optimal trade entry was enough. OTE pattern, the flagship that was on my YouTube channel. That's enough. The 2022 model, that's enough. You can use it in every session. London, New York. PM session in New York. You can use it in London close. You can trade it in Forex. You can trade it in futures. You can trade it in crypto. You can trade it in whatever the fuck you want to trade it in. It works. There's no excuse. You have zero excuse not to have some baseline by now. You should have some kind of experience. So you know what? This shit works. And I have to work on refining it, but I know it works because I've seen it in back testing, looking at where it has done this in the past. I tell you what time to look for these things to form. That way you're not just going around and looking at charts blindly. Go right to these specific times of the day. That's where it's going to form. For those people that go back in their old data and their old charts and they study that, they see it. They don't need me to do 50 examples of that. They don't need to see me do it live 50 times a week. They're, they're sold on the idea. Okay, there's something here. It, it's it merits more investigation because it, I see the evidence of this thing occurring. It's not contrived. It's not conjectured. It's not made up. It's not fabricated. It's really happening every day. And once you see that, you don't need to have anybody else to cheerlead for you. You know, okay, there's something here. I want to mine that. So I give you just a few models so that way you go in and you now start working on the skill sets that are required. Not veering off course, you know, hopping from one PD array, one approach, fair value gap, inversion, fair value gap, you know, breakers, you know, market maker models, buy, sell. You know, there's a thousand things out there that I teach. Every individual one of them is a model. Every single one of them is an individual model. But I give you, like, is this, this is the best way to learn. I'm allowing you to pick your weapon. I've opened my arsenal doors. So here it is. Look what I have here. Pick your weapon. But nothing changes when it comes to time. Time of day, these things occur at specific times, certain days of the week, certain weeks of the month, certain month of the year. 
I'm allowing you to bring your personality, your personal influence, because you're the you're the problem, and you're the last puzzle piece. See, some of you are sitting around here, you're writing diligent notes, you're doing this, you're doing that, and that's wonderful. And but you're all waiting for that last penny to drop, the last ICT puzzle piece, and then it's all going to come together. It's all going to be crystal clear. Once he tells me this one PD, the 81 PD arrays, that, that, the 81 final last one, that's, that's it. That's it. That's the Holy Grail. No, it's not. If you walked over to your mirror right now, if you're driving, look in your rear view mirror, adjust it, look at yourself real quick. Not too long, you're driving. That's the final puzzle piece. And it's always been you. You're the reason why you succeed, and you're the reason why you haven't succeeded yet. And ultimately, you and you alone are the only reason why you're going to fail. That's not me talking down to you. That's me telling you the way it is. That's just the way it is. If you don't have a baseline, which is what the 2022 model will give you, that silver bullet and the optimal trade entry. If you don't have a baseline experience going through the motions of, okay, this is the time of day that markets should do these specific things. Well, what's that mean? London creates usually the high or low of the day. New York is usually a continuation unless London was a consolidation, didn't do much. Then the reversal or higher low of the day will form in New York. Oh, there you go. There's one of those little things that I always tuck in when people are usually getting tired and bored to turn the video off and turn the presentation off. They don't get that. But that's just the way it works. Line and close or the end of the AM session is usually for Forex, the higher low of the day. The opposing higher low of the day. That's why I'm not a fan of trading Forex past one o'clock in New York local time. Does that mean no trading after that? No, it just means focus on index features. But like my daughter she is a professional student because she feels safe as a professional student are you a professional ict student because if you are you're not going to succeed i'll say it again are you coming to me for a constant dose of something new but have done nothing with what i've already given you then you're a professional student and they don't pay professional students you always had to pay out of pocket. Are you a professional procrastinator? Because that's the equivalent. You keep procrastinating. You have to put the sleeves up. You have to sit down, turn off all the distractions, social media, sports, weekend living, all that stuff. There's plenty of time to do that later. And you can be affording it better than right now. You don't have time for that. You can't afford it. You have to be putting all your effort and attention into this because what's coming, folks, is a shitstorm that nobody's ever seen before. It's going to ramp up real fast. And things that you've grown accustomed to, the things that always want to be like this, it won't be. And things are going to get really expensive, harder to get. So you want to be able to have a secondary income a third income, a, a means of mitigating any potential loss of job. I saw students tweeting that they just lost their job. They were either made redundant or just, you know, the company said, that, you know, you're done. Imagine that with children in a mortgage right now, with a shrinking job market. That's scary. I, I'm not, I'm not, too well off to not understand or respect the fact that if I was in that situation, I would be scared. And I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, I don't know how average people are affording things right now. Like it's expensive. We spent like $3,700 just for three days down in Clearwater. We stayed at the Hyatt Regency and, you know, 
was it worth all that? No. She had fun. I mean, I, I preferred um, Panama City Beach. They have better beaches. But the amount of money I spent, like I, I could have paid for a whole year's worth of groceries, non-perishable food. And driving back, I told her, I said, it feels like a waste. Like it, it felt like it was a complete waste being there. You know, I, I wish I wouldn't have spent as much time there. And for the folks in Florida, I just dropped this in here too, a little bit of tinfoil. I told you last year that, uh, and for the folks who've been around me longer, um, you're going to see stuff taken off in Florida and Texas because they're going to punish those states. They don't want people going down there. Everybody thought, we're going to run away from all the things that's going on. We're going to go down to Texas. We're going to go down to Florida. We're going to escape all those demonic demons that we call Democrats. <laughs> you just ran right into the fire, jumped out of the firing pan, right into the fire. So, where's all your construction workers right now in Florida? Look at those uh, housing communities that are being developed. Who's putting them together right now? Probably real quiet in there right now, isn't it? Disney's leaving. All that stuff. Look what's happening in Texas. Uh, you couldn't give me a house down there. No way. It could be extravagant. I wouldn't live there. And it's going to get worse down there. And they're going to allow more of it. The people that are in power are placed there. Even the ones you think you can trust. They're all part of it. And it's going to get worse. And because I'm vocalizing my thoughts about this stuff, this is why it doesn't appear on my YouTube channel. Because they would take the channel down. I do it here, and I know people take it and they put it up on their YouTube channel, but understand, these are the parts, these parts. You'll probably lose your monetization because you're monetizing these Twitter spaces, and I never said you couldn't do it. I don't care that you're doing it. I don't care. I don't care, and there's a number of you doing it, but just be mindful because of the things I'm talking about. When I talk about like this, you could possibly lose the monetization because I have friends that run channels that are outside the scope of trading. So they're not like, they're not traders. There's people that do certain things on YouTube and they talked about this stuff and they lost their channel. And that's the reason why I don't do the tinfoil hat discussions on my YouTube channel. It's not, it's not the purpose of that channel to do that. But over here, I don't care if they turn off Twitter. <laughs> I don't care if they close this account. I don't care if they take my sound cloud down. I don't care. But if I lose the voice I have in the trading community by having this type of discussion in my YouTube videos or a place in one of those videos, uh, that would get under my skin. I would Because I put a lot of work and effort and time in those videos. And I did it with the kindness of my heart to say, look, this is my, my gift to the community as, as a trader, a mentor, a human. I want it to be received and appreciated. And that's the reason why I don't do those discussions over there because, you know, trust me, trust me when I tell you, okay, there are lots of channels out there that's going to get wasted here soon, real, real soon. The ministry of truth is going to be established here, just like it is in other places. And don't take my word for it. Just sit back and watch how it happens. And that's going to cause stress and anxiety. The fact that things are going to be so hard to afford. Is going to be stress and anxiety for everyone. I got lots of money. I'm still bitching about how much things cost because it's astronomical right now. It's ridiculous what things are costing. If you don't have a sound baseline and a model that you have grown to trust, how do you think you're going to be able to trade when it gets hard? What have you done the last six weeks? I've been on vacation because I knew the market wasn't going to perform for me. This is exactly what I teach my students. And charter members, you're listening. Did I not talk about this in our daily discussions? If it ain't right, leave it alone. Do something else. Unplug. So I did. I took myself away. Because 
invariably, if I stay on social media, I'll see somebody say something. It'll spark my engines. See someone talk about, this is the best way to trade, and it's nonsense, and I'll feel like I have to say something in regards to that. And I'll go in doing something that I'm teaching the opposite. So because I've told you that risks were high, the market was likely to consolidate, sit back and wait. And I had another guy. Oh, my God. Comment section. I can see every comment that's made on the videos, but I'm not authorizing any of them because it's too much to babysit. I have a lot of people spamming and have goobers out there trying to draw attention to their stupid ass YouTube channels that don't even teach shit. But the uh, this joker um, that constantly puts these little, uh, I made so much money following this woman in Bitcoin. I, I, I can't block that person enough. They're always coming up. So, but there's a comment that came in. Guy says, uh, Stop trading ES. Nobody likes it anymore. Trade something else like gold. <laughs> no, you simply wait. See, that mindset says that's a person that wants to be trading all the time. And that's a person that's going to lose their money. That's a person that's going to lose and fail. So you don't want to do those types of things. You want to find a mindset in all the things I'm teaching you. Find your path, your way. And grow there. Look what happened to ES. Last six weeks, you should have been back testing, not trying to trade, not trying to get your funded account passed. I was telling you, low probability, low probability. Was I able to take trades? Yeah. But were they frequent and, and, and happening a lot? No. But then I told you in YouTube, this is what I think is going to happen. Isn't it funny how I came out and gave you that analysis right before everything started moving around again? I know what I'm looking for. I'm teaching you how to do the things I'm teaching you to study and look for. When those things occur in price action, that's when you that's when you engage. That's when you attack it. But if it's not there, you do nothing. And you don't worry and wiggle and, and writhe in your skin and think, oh, I'm missing out. No. You don't jump to another market. You become a specialist and you wait like a sniper. You wait. Because that price will walk its way into your crosshairs. And when it does... Boom. Another one bites the dust. You're here to grow your PL. That's it. PL, profit and loss statement. Are you profitable? Are you profitable in your learning? And now that you're trading, should you become one at trading with real money? Are you profitable? That's the reason why you're here. Your goal is that, not. Let's just hang out and be friends with ICT. Let's get ICT to respond to my tweet. You know, I'm not a celebrity. Please don't expect a celebrity type response. I don't want that. So don't treat me like one. I'm just one of the guys. Okay. I have something I want to share. I'm trying to be as down to earth and practical and just approachable. And some of you just keep trying to push me up. I don't want to be higher than I am. The, the view's fine where I'm at. But you're here to learn a skill set. It's going to require you to work very, very hard. Silver bullet, time-based. You can use it in every session. What are, you, what are you doing with it? Are you backtesting it? Do you have a college mindset? Are you coming to me on a scholarship basis where you feel like you can fuck off a little bit because you didn't come out of your pocket? That's not the right mindset. If you were paying for college and again, at your own pocket, you'd be doing it differently, wouldn't you? You'd be showing up on time, taking due diligence and notes and practicing and studying and canceling all the weekend life. You wouldn't be doing any of those things. Most of you come to me with a grade school mindset where you feel like you can fuck off. Oh, I got plenty of time. Just, I'll watch this video and want to get around to it. I'll take notes when it's something important. This guy talks a lot of bullshit. Okay, I'll get, Let's get to the point, ICT. I'll write down when it's in, impactful to me. Well, that's a grade school mindset. You, you, you feel like you can pick and choose what you should know. The ICT mentorship mindset is independent thinker. You know, you, you understand that what you're learning is going to earn you an income and you write your own checks and you don't have a mindset that is framed on the J-O-B, the job. So you have to create this baseline. And I've only done this small sampling of models because it's very small list to choose from. 
So that way it promotes discipline on your part and allows you to produce your own experience that I can't give you. You can't buy it from somebody else's course. They can't teach it to you. Your experience is what you garnered from the time and study and the effort you put behind everything that you've done. So it gives you a realistic expectation. And I give you the realistic chance to, to make it in this because I'm allowing you to get out of your own damn way. If you don't get out of your way, you're going to be the impediment. You're the problem. You're the barrier. You're the thing, the last piece in the puzzle. You have already been taught everything that's necessary to make lots of fucking money consistently. And I've also taught you when not to do something. Sit still. And it's okay. Hundreds of handles have been made. Hundreds of handles. You see that. I explained where it's going to go, why it's going to behave the way it is. And I'm teaching a new concept, the Six Sister. And I just introduced a silver bullet. Stop making tutorial videos, folks, because you're not ready to be teaching it. That's not me talking down to my students. That's me telling you the truth. You're trying to promote incomplete information. I promise you, you'll have all kinds of candy to spread around on your YouTube channel come November. Okay. But let me teach it properly first. Okay. That's all I'm asking because you're making it harder for me as a mentor while you're doing that. People are coming to me. This guy or this gal says this, 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 and they're doing this and they're doing that. The 90 minute cycles, they said this and do that. Why don't you just wait? It takes time to get through this information, but I'm also doing things real time. I could sit down and do everything from a hindsight perspective and it be complete theory, but there's going to be a lot of you saying, this is bullshit because if it worked, you would have been doing it. I'm doing it, then explaining how I did it. And then some of you are discovering, oh shit, that is in that core content. Oh, it's already on his YouTube channel. How about that? Yeah, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I've already created the wheel. It's on my YouTube channel. Use it. Study it. What are you doing with it? It's great to be part of a community, and I'm trying to cultivate a very supportive community. But don't get stuck in that mindset. You came here to learn how to make money. Don't fucking forget that. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Until next time, be safe.